short-term versus long-term rentals, five things you need to know. So we did a massive deep dive here at Good Life on short-term versus long-term rentals, and we wrote a blog, it's just crushing, you gotta check it out, we'll put a link somewhere. We talked to industry experts, lovers, haters, property managers, owners, everyone in between, and we found out some interesting stuff. Without further ado, here's the five things you need to know. So number one, short-term rentals are only more profitable than long-term rentals if you manage it yourself. Now everyone knows Airbnbs bring in more money, generally speaking, than long-term rentals. That's why people get into them, if they're in the right area and they're kept up right. But what most people don't realize is the only way it ends up netting you more money than, let's say, a traditional, your grandpa's old long-term rental, is if you actually manage it yourself. Because short-term rental managers charge up to 25% plus to manage it. And so if you factor in the management costs, then short-term is not much different uh, profitability-wise than long-term. Numero dos. It takes 10 times longer to manage a short-term rental than a long-term rental. On average, a long-term rental will take you maybe a couple hours a month, where a short-term rental can take you a couple hours a day. It really depends on how often you're renting it, how in demand it is, but it's a big step up. So when you're factoring in the ROI or return on investment with your long-term or short-term rental, make sure you factor in your time because your time is the most valuable asset you have. Hey, but it's not all bashing short-term rentals here. We love our short-term rental owners. Number three, this one's for you. A lot of people use the property as a second home and it's great to have a property where you can do that, use it part of the time when it's not rented and rent it out to help cover your expenses the rest of the year. Think about it, you could have a place in Mammoth, you could have a place in San Diego, and a lot of owners get a lot of value, not so much on the cash flow side, but just on the ability to use their place when they want to, so that's a big level up. All right, now we're gonna get real for number four though. This is something most people don't talk about. Short-term rentals take long-term rentals, which are houses for people to live in, off the market. It's something most people don't realize or discuss, but think about it. If you took every Airbnb in San Diego off the market and turned it into a long-term rental, Prices would stabilize, they'd go down for renters because you know, supply would increase. Now, am I advocating to get rid of Airbnb? No, it's, Airbnb's great, I love using it. Is there a right amount for each city to have available for you know vacation purposes? Sure, but just know every short-term rental means one less house for someone to live in in your community, it's a real deal. And finally, number five, I didn't forget about you Airbnb lovers, I got love for you. Short-term rentals have purpose too. You find purpose in anything, really. One of the most interesting things I learned during this deep dive was that there's many Airbnb hosts that get a lot of energy and a lot of meaning from providing vacation homes for people, providing a memorable experience. Using their home as a place for families or single people or couples or whatever can make lasting memories. And that's really meaningful and purposeful. Also, it can help people get into the business world. You know, buy a property that maybe wouldn't have cash flowed long term, put in some sweat equity, so suddenly you're a business owner. You have this little side hustle and you can get your foot in the door to entrepreneurship. So what's your take on these five things? You tell me in the comments below.